Hi everybody, JJ here with ASUS. And today we're gonna to be talking about updating the firmware or the UEFI BIOS on your motherboard. This is extremely important as the firmware really defines a large number of aspects of operation of your motherboard, ranging from the overall interoperability and compatibility to performance, as well as stability, as well as ultimately the overclocking experience and many other aspects of operation for how your system ultimately runs. And in updating the firmware, you can really help to ensure that you get the best experience across all these different aspects. So we're gonna go ahead and walk you through the ins and outs of how to effectively update the firmware on your motherboard, whether it's gonna be on a B450 series motherboard, X570 series motherboard, or the latest TRX40 series of motherboards. So let's go ahead and get into it. So before we get into the specific steps on actually how to update your UEFI, there are a couple of things that you wanna keep in mind. If you've already gone ahead and put together your system and everything is working smoothly without any issues, I would actually probably recommend that you don't update to the newer UEFI unless you specifically want, uh, let's say, a performance benefit or there's a specific feature or function that you're aware of that exists only in that firmware release. Now, why would I say this? Well, this comes from the aspect that in some situations, and most commonly with heavily overclocked configurations or specialized storage configurations which feature RAID setups, you can sometimes have issues by migrating from one UEFI release to another UEFI release. It can cause issues potentially with that RAID volume not necessarily being bootable um, or potentially causing instability with that overclock configuration. Now, you generally can go ahead and redial in your overclock settings to work under that new UEFI, as well as go ahead and of course recreate create the RAID volume, but there could be issues with that, and so it is something to keep in mind. For the vast majority of users that are, of course, running stock experience or near stock experience, there's generally not going to be any issues or negatives uh, from going from one version of UEFI to the newer version of the UEFI, especially because you're gaining many benefits by going to that newer version release, especially with AMD's latest generation releases where they've phased in quite a number of performance improvements. Now, what are you going to need in terms of updating the UEFI? Well, there's two options you have available to you. The first option is going to be the easiest. With the latest generation of ASUS B450, X570, as well as TRX40 series motherboards, the updating process is extremely easy. And the reason being is that we've gone ahead and integrated the updating options built into the UEFI itself. If you navigate into the UEFI and head over to the tool section, you have Easy Flash 3. Easy Flash 3 can directly connect to the ASUS support servers and download the corresponding UEFI update directly to the motherboard and complete the flash process. It's a very simple, easy, and effective way to be able to complete this. Now, the one thing you do want to keep in mind is that this currently only works through a wired connection. It does not work through wireless. So even though if your motherboard features wireless built on board, you can only complete this updating process by utilizing an Ethernet LAN cable that's physically connected to your motherboard to, of course, your corresponding either, let's say, router or switch, providing you a network connection. Now, another option uh, is probably the most traditional and standard option that people use to update the UEFI is to download the UEFI update directly from the website. This will either require that you download the update on your system that you have running that you're going to apply the update to or from a secondary system. Um, it's a very easy process though. All you need to do is head over to support.asus.com. From there, type in the corresponding model name for the actual motherboard that you have, and then you wanna head over to the download section. Once you've arrived there, you wanna go ahead and select the latest UEFI release. Once you've gone ahead and selected the latest UEFI release, you wanna download that corresponding file. Uh, generally, I would recommend saving it to your desktop. From there, you will need to extract it using some form of decompression utility. Windows has its own built-in decompression utility, or you can, of course, use third-party utilities uh, like WinZip, uh, WinRAR, or 7-Zip, or any number of other type of options to ultimately decompress uh, this file. Once you have that file decompressed, you wanna go ahead and move that over to a flash drive. And once it's been moved over to a flash drive, you've completed uh, half of the actual updating process. Now in the next step, we're gonna actually go through booting into the actual UEFI BIOS and then taking advantage of the integrated Easy Flash 3 wizard by then flashing directly from the flash drive the corresponding file that we've downloaded. Now that you've gone ahead and completed the download of the file, all you need to do is boot into the UEFI. So we go ahead and hit the delete key when we're powering on our system and it's going through the actual power on self test or the post. Uh, this will allow us to go ahead and access the UEFI. We're then gonna go ahead and go into the tool section and access Easy Flash 3. From there, you wanna go ahead and select your flash drive. And from there, go ahead and select the directory. Now, in most situations, I would generally recommend just having that file that we went ahead and extracted 
and placing it directly in the root of your flash drive. This makes it the easiest way uh, to find the overall corresponding file. Uh, once you've gone ahead and selected that file, you're gonna wanna press OK in terms of the file that you wanna use to update your UEFI. Now the actual motherboard's integrated utility will do essentially a parity check, uh, verifying that the actual model number information uh, is correct, meaning that you have the right file. In the event that you actually get a flag from the UEFI saying, hey, this isn't the correct file, you're gonna to wanna to make sure to go back to the website and confirm that you actually have downloaded the correct UEFI update for your motherboard. Now, it's important to keep in mind that depending on the version that you're coming from, you sometimes may see a delay in essentially acceptance of the motherboard recognizing that file. In most situations, it'll be pretty quick, but in some situations, it can take actually about five to 10 seconds to correctly recognize the file and then prompt you if you wanna proceed with flashing the, uh, the actual motherboard. Now, once you've been prompted, all you need to do is hit okay, and then you will see the actual flash process commence. Now, it's important to keep in mind that this flash process can take um, you know, a couple of minutes in terms of its totality. In some situations, you'll see the actual flash go through fairly quickly, and it may be finished in as little as about maybe 15 to about 20 seconds. In some other situations, you may see it actually run maybe a couple of minutes. In both situations, this is entirely normal, and under no circumstances do you ever want to shut down your system. Allow it to go ahead and complete all the way up to the 100%, and then from there, you'll be actually advised with a message that lets you know that the actual flash process is completed successfully. From there, you want to go ahead and press OK, and the system will reboot. Now, once it goes ahead and reboots, you wanna make sure to not touch any corresponding keys. You don't wanna do anything to your system. The reason being is that sometimes that there is secondary firmware that is gonna be flashed during that actual repost and that reboot process. And you'll generally be advised of this with an on-screen message letting you know that secondary, essentially, firmware is being updated. Uh, this is especially common on, let's say, higher-end ROG series motherboards where we have secondary, uh, let's say, specialized controllers which also have firmware that can be updated outside of the primary firmware for the motherboard itself. So overall around, you just wanna keep in mind that you're looking at any on-screen messages that are gonna be present to ensure that you're not cutting off the system and allowing to go ahead and go through the entire update process. Now, once the update process is gonna be completed, you'll generally be prompted uh, with a default UEFI message. And all you need to do is go into the UEFI, then go ahead and load up your UEFI defaults, and then from there, boot back up into your operating system. Now, if you, of course, have any specialized aspects of operation that you need to define inside the UEFI, then you wanna go ahead and make those adjustments at that time, and then from there, save them, and then boot back up into the operating system. At that point, you've gone ahead and completed your UEFI update. Last but not least though, I'm gonna show you how you can quickly go ahead and reference in the UEFI which version of the UEFI you're currently running so that you can make sure that that update completed effectively. So to verify the UEFI release that you have on your system, all you need to do is reboot the system, hit that delete key and enter the UEFI again. Once you've gone ahead and done that, all you need to do is navigate over to the top of the screen and there you'll be listed the actual UEFI version that you're running. As long as that corresponds to the version that you went ahead and downloaded from the support site or that you saw noted, uh, if you utilize the integrated Easy Flash utility, then you're good to go and you've gone ahead and successfully updated your UEFI. So that wraps up our quick overview on how to update your UEFI BIOS. If you've got any questions, comments, concerns, or feedback, feel free to go ahead and drop them down in the comments section below. And while you're down there, if you can go ahead and hit that like button, as well as hit that subscribe button, it'd be really appreciated. We've got a lot more videos planned to release here on the YouTube channel, and I'd love for you guys to be able to check them out when they're posted. So as always, take care, take it easy, enjoy the rest of your day.